Hey you guys, what's going on? It's me Kiafa. Welcome back to all of my subscribers. Welcome to my video. If you're new, I hope you enjoy the content. You guys, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not even really finna apologize because I'm just all over the place. I'm really trying to work some things out. It's kind of like this. What is it? It's just it seems chaotic and all over the place, but it is a method to my madness. I'm trying to establish a workflow and i've been trying to establish a workflow um for a long time especially with working as as an employee at other companies as well as trying to run my own business and it's just a lot and so a lot of times things get pushed to the side and i have to come revisit them when i get a chance and that's kind of what's happening right now so i figured i would revisit my what was it? The video where I did the surgical tech certification exam study session that I wanted to come and do an update with you guys so you can kind of get a better idea and a more updated idea of what I was talking about in that video. That is one of my most viewed videos. And because of that, I just want to update the information for you guys. So, you know, you'll be updated. This, I made that video in 2016 and 2018. So let's just revisit and I just want to give you guys a better idea of how I use this material to pass the exam and how you can use it. When I was getting ready to take the exam, you guys, this all happened because I was looking for study material for surgical tech certification exam. And the only material that I was finding was study guides that people had put together. And they weren't really constructed in a way that I found that it was helpful to me. And so I just went on this, I don't even know, journey to find surgical tech study guides and they weren't great. Like they weren't bad. And a lot of them did provide information. It just might not have been the information that was needed to pass the exam. And so the first time I took the exam, I did fail it. And it, it was partly because I didn't study for it and what I was studying went on the exam. And so when I went back to take the exam the second time, when in preparation to the exam, I made sure to do all the research that I can, find the most quality or the best quality, yeah, the best quality study material that was out there. And the best material... It made sense when I realized what it was. It made sense to me. But the best material came from the National Board of Surgical Tech and Surgical Assistance, which is the organization that governs or constructs the exam. And so when I was in, let me just give y'all a little breakdown of how my mind is working at when I'm studying for this exam and where I was coming from. So I'm prior military. When I was in the Navy, we had this thing called a bib. And the bib was, I don't forgot what the name of it, like where that acronym came from, but the bib was the outline of your advancement exam. And it gave you a breakdown of what words was or what topics was going to be on your exam and in what category. And so in my search to find surgical tech study information, I came across the National Board of Surgical Tech, Surgical Assistants, they have an outline. This is the outline. It's called a content outline. Is this? Oh, no, this is not the outline. Here's the outline. This is the outline. Okay. So it tells you right here, as you can see, 200 word questions. 175 of the questions are scored and 25 of the questions are pre-test questions or they, not, they don't grade them. Okay. So... I was happy when I saw this because you guys, I was familiar. This is basically what a military bib, a Navy bib, because I was in the Navy. So the Navy had a bib and I, I wish I knew what that stood for, but the bib, like I said, was the outline for your advancement exam. And this is what you would study to prepare for the exam. And so this is what, when I saw this, I was like, this is how I'm about to study for my exam. So what I did was I asked myself, I broke this down into the sections that how it is already constructed. I just live it the same way. So in a perioperative care 
section. There is a preoperative preparation section, a intraoperative procedure section, and then there is a. Are you gonna let me do it? No. Where is it? It won't let me go to the next page. Do I need which one am I going? I wanted to show y'all the next page, but oh, I gotta press this button. <laughs> I'm slow. And then there's a where is it? Post operative procedure. So I don't really like this way this is set up. Normally it's set up the other way, so I won't have to stroll like that. But anyway, so you have those three sections and then you study study it like this okay so we know based off of how this is constructed that the surgeon preference card is reviewed in the preoperative perioperative section right and then you want to kind of answer not kind of answer but you want to answer the objectives that are here so what you do is you ask yourself or you put in question form the objectives that they have placed in front of you so for the first one it says review surgeon's preference card well you need to first find out what a surgeon preference card is why do you need a surgeon's preference card who uses the surgeon's preference card and everything else about a surgeon's preference card that you can possibly come up with place that there and when you place it there that is what you're going to study so now how are you going to answer these questions or objectives once you have written them out in question form because that's really what i was doing i was just looking at these objectives and i wrote them out as questions and so i will answer that but i need to find a source to get the the correct information right well guess what they made it even easier for us they give you a reference list you guys so this is the reference list for the exam so all of these objectives can be answered with the reference list of materials so th there are some books on here that are pretty um, expensive, like this Alexander's, um, Alexander's Care of Patients and Surgery. That's pretty pricey, and the surgical tech for surgical technology is pricey. I don't remember how much this one was, but you, what you can do is if you're not in a in a program that are requiring you to have these books, you can either put in with like some other people and maybe purchase the reference materials so you guys can just create your own study group or um purchase some yourself and i'll leave a link to all of these books down below so you can purchase them through um, amazon if not then you could just um a good way to to do it without purchasing the paperback is just to rent them from amazon that's what i did Actually, I have the Alexander's Care of the Patient and Surgery. I actually have that book from when I was um, studying for the exam. But if you if you don't want to pay for these books, then just get into a study group and y'all all put in, you know, what you would spend on an average study guide. So the average study guide that I seen was like $200.00. So you could just make it a project and everybody put in like $20, 20 people, $20. And then y'all could just create your own study group. Most schools, if you had a good school, they probably have some type of study material for you. And it's like maybe some um, tests, practice exams and things like that. But if they don't, then this is a good way to come up with your own practice, you know, exams. The National Board, and you can see over here too, they do have their own study guide. And it is an app form. I did I did have it. I do have it because once you pay for it, you have it for life. I also purchased, purchased their, um, the National Board also has practice exams. So I'm going to tell you, and I think I said this in my video from like 2016, don't buy both of the exams. The practice exams because it's two practice exams it's a practice exam a and a practice exam b it's a total of 300 questions the same questions that are on the practice exam is in the app i would say get the app that's what i would suggest because the app is 40 dollars 
each of the practice exams are forty dollars a piece. So you end up spending eighty dollars for the same three hundred questions, and you have the convenience of the app being at your fingers, you know, in your phone. So what I would do, just to recap, you guys, like I was saying, is I would use this to study, break it down in sections as it's already put together, and then I would break down each one of these objectives and I would answer them with this ref these references. This is how I would go in and find the answers and I would get the information that I needed, especially about something like a preference card or any of this stuff. But that's just one way you can study for your surgical tech exam. It's really kind of cool to be able to just cut through like I like this outline because it cuts through all the extra stuff like if you you got 25 questions hold on let me just make sure okay it's 105 questions total in the perioperative care section it's 29 questions that's going to come out of the preoperative section of the perioperative section you see how they work then 66 and then post op only gets 10. So if you come up with 105 questions or more, you should be pretty close to, you know, the questions that they're asking. You should have enough questions to come up with the question to, to come up with the answers for the questions that they're going to ask on the exam. So I would make sure I do have more than 105 questions total. I'll make sure that in this section, I will have at least 29 questions. Go for more than that because it, they gave you 25 objectives. So you should definitely be able to come up with 29 questions out of 25 objectives. Like how I said, review the surgeon's preference card is the first one. The first thing that I would say was, what is the surgeon's preference card? Who reviews the surgeon's preference card? What's on the surgeon's preference card? How important is the surgeon's preference card? You know, just break that down. And then the next objective is verify availability of the surgery equipment. And so who does that? How would you do that? You know, just ask yourself. The, and now all of these questions you might not come up with an answer to, and it's fine. But the point is to just squeeze all the juice out of each one of these objectives so you can get the answers you know that they're looking for when you go to study the exam okay so get these court get these written down and so and i would say write them down if you're a visual person um once you write them down go and maybe get a picture of like an image off of Google or somewhere of whatever it is, you know, to help you remember or come up with an acronym or something to help you remember all the parts of the surgical scrub. Like it says perform the surgical scrub, the initial and the water list. So they going to ask you, how do you perform a surgical scrub? And then you just need to break down how you perform an initial surgical scrub and how you perform a water list surgical scrub. Now, another thing to look at too is, these um, things that they have in parentheses because they're giving you hints on what they're looking for. So remember how I say you got 25 objectives here. But if you look at these parentheses, it's going to also give you some more questions to answer or some more information that you may need to ask yourself or answer or however you want to word that. So like this one, it says verify. Well, I'll use that one already. Let's do this one. Prepare and maintain operating room equipment according to surgical procedure. Oh, excuse me, guys. And then in parentheses, it has temperature, lights, suction, and furniture, right? So what should the temperatures be? Well, you know, you need to know that. Does the lights work? Does suction work? You know, if it and um, what type of furniture do you need for what certain procedures require special furniture like and pain there's a pain bed in certain um, ortho cases there's a fracture bed 
Um, you know, there's different, uh, if you're doing a laparoscopic procedure, you may need a tower. You know, there's different things that you need to know. So not only how do you prepare it, but this question is prepare and maintain. So this one is, that's one question. This is the second question. And then you need to know the temperatures and the lighting and the suction you need to answer those things how do you prepare the temperature or which temperature should it be hot or what temperatures should the rooms be at what type of lighting situation do you need what type of suction do you need do you need suction containers will you need big suction containers for liposuction will you need a liposuction machine you know just all of that you need to know and ask, ask yourself those questions so when you go take the test, you can be like, oh, no, I know the temperature. Like if they give you a question and it says Johnny went into the room and the room was, you know, 85 degrees with 75% humidity, y'all don't have to shut that room down. You know that. Like because if you did the – if you used the reference book and the reference, one of these reference books, maybe – surgical tech for surgical technologies it says that the temperature should be less than 75 and the humidity should be under 50 i'm not saying that that's what exactly the, the answer is but what i'm saying is if that's what this reference book is telling you then you know when you read the information on the exam that if it says something that is out of range you can identify it because you've already read it when you was you know studying and preparing for the exam so I hope that makes sense to you guys what I'm trying to say. But just break it all the way down and make sure you have more questions than what they're telling you. You need more than 29 questions out of these 25. You need 66 questions out of this. Wait a minute. It stops at 14. It goes to 31. This one, they're only giving you 10 questions. They gave you 12 object. No. 10 questions and they gave you 10 objectives so this one you got to double you know your your questions per you need at least two questions really you need you need at least two questions but for some of the questions you're gonna need more than two questions some of them you're gonna need like three questions because the 66 and the double it you only gonna get to um 62 so you'll still be four questions short but it says assist in application of cast splint braces and similar devices. You need to know how need to know what similar devices they're talking about. Prepare and apply sterile dressings. How do you prepare them? How do you apply them? Because some things like the doc might ask you to put, you know, beta on or something. You just need to be able to answer these questions is really what I'm saying. And the best way to answer the questions is to get these books. And to use these books to answer these objectives. That's what I would do. And that's how I would study for this exam, you guys. Um, if you, I will go into detail about this app. I use it. I still use it for my first assist exam I'm studying for. Because the first assist covers this as well. And so, that's why I kind of still, like, make sure I read over this stuff. So, I don't forget anything when I go sit for my first, first assist exam. But I um, I do use the app, and it is $40, like I say, and don't purchase the practice exam and the app. Don't do that. Just practice, uh, purchase the app, and don't worry about the practice exams on the website because it's twice as much for the same information. Okay? So that's all I got for you guys. I hope this video was helpful. This one is nowhere near as long as the other one, you guys, and... I am glad because that other one is super duper long. Like that video, I don't know what I was on that day, but it's long. It does get give you some good points and stuff like that. But this one, I think, will help you as well. Oh, here's another good question too that's down here or example of how we structure this question. So this one says, maintain equipment, records, and record logs, sterile, biological, laser, or laser log, and sterilizers. So, I would ask myself, what's a steroid? What's a biological? You know, what's a, what kind of sterilizers? Just break that all the way down. This one is going to ask you how to operate cleaning and sterilizing devices using the ultrasonic, the autoclave, and the cart washer. 
And basically what I would do is look at that and then look up ultrasonic washer, autoclave, and cart washer, operating, cleaning, and sterilizing devices. And I would look it up in whichever one of these. It'll probably be one of these because these two are just for like, let me see. No, it might be up here. Surgical instrumentation. It might, that, that last one might be in there. But if it's asking sterilization questions, it's probably going to be in something that's specifically for surgical tests. This one right here, the Alexander Care Patient in Surgery, is kind of for surgical tests and nurses. So I would just look at all of them and just basically go into the index and search whatever word, you know, whatever the main word is or whatever the main subject is of the objective that you're um, reading. So it says sterilize instruments for immediate use, short cycle. So if I was looking, I would assume, I'm this is assumption, me assuming that that would be in this and then I would just look up sterilizing um, short loads or um, what was it? It's sterilizing instruments for immediate use. I would look up that. And then how I say short cycle, like I would try to look that up in this book. That's what I would do, you guys. So I'm going to link all of these books in the description box below um, if you do purchase them I'm just gonna just get the disclosure if you purchase those books from me I will get a commission it's no cost to you it'll come from Amazon because that's where all of these books um, will be linked to I can also place them on my website for you to just go purchase them straight from there and yeah you guys um i think that's it actually no i'm not i don't know if i'm gonna put them on my website or not but i will put the links in the description box below so you can go ahead and just i would just study these you guys like i say think about what it is that you're trying to do if your what is the word i'm trying if your school doesn't provide these books for you like i say i would just go in with a whole bunch of people create a study group within your school and just study these, study these objectives, study those, and then get it and you can buy these or rent them in PDF or um, ebook format. So you don't even really need a book and all y'all could just share, you know, you could post it and like, what is it, Google Docs or something like that for all of y'all to kind of study and see together what each other is studying. Like, that's what I would do. But if you don't want to do that, just, just purchase the book. Because if you end up being a surgical first assist or you want to go to school for surgical first assist, then you will need the same books to study again. So it's up to you guys. But that's all I have for y'all. I hope this video was useful to somebody because I... The other video gets a lot of um, views, and it's old, and yeah, so it's time to update it, and this is what I got for y'all, so like I say, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll make another video on some more stuff that I use to study for the exam, but I think this will get you started. I'm also going to put down below a link to um, an email, or not an email, excuse me, a link to my newsletter, and you can just join the newsletter with your email address or whatever and when I do post not necessarily on here like I might post on YouTube but I'll be posting or emailing out more study tips as they come that may be just exclusive to my um, email subscribers so that'll be kind of cool and then um, I'll also be offering a study group once I get everything situated it'll be like a webinar thing and I'll just be posting videos and study information that'll be emailed out to you or given you'll be given a private link through the email and that'll be definitely exclusive for my followers and YouTube subscribers and things like that just to get back to the surgical tech community but I think that's the end of this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful day Please like, share, and subscribe to this video. 
to this video, you guys, and make sure you come back. I'm sorry if the next video don't have nothing to do with surgical tech, but that's just kind of how my life is. It might have something to do with gardening. Who knows? It's still all kind of one big thing, you guys. That's what a lot of people don't realize is that everything that I do, and most of the people is like this, everything that we do is connected in some way, shape, or form. And so, yeah, gardening relaxes me. So I'll talk about how gardening can relax other surgical techs as well and just things like that. But in the meantime, study for your shoe. You might need to go garden after you take this exam or just to relax because I was stressed out when I took the exam the second time because I didn't want to fail it twice. And so I made sure that I took it serious the second time I studied and learned how to just wind down and chill and things like that before I... um. You know, study them before I went and took the test. Like, I did all of the stuff that they recommend you do b the night before you get ready to take a big exam and things like that. Like, sleep and eat and go to bed early and, you know, don't really study that day. Because if you don't know it by the time you take this, the day before you take the exam, you probably just don't know it. But I, and I will say I did kind of go over my stuff before, like, that night. The next day I did go over it. But anyways, you guys, I'm just rambling now. I will catch you on this video. Um, yeah, I love you guys. If nobody told you today, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.